You're very welcome back to the programme. Well, in February, we covered Margaret Norton's story. At that stage, Margaret had discovered that she had been illegally adopted at birth in a GP surgery in Carrickmacross, and Margaret was trying to trace her birth mother. Well, Margaret, along with journalist Alison O'Reilly, joins me now. Thank you both very much indeed uh, for coming in this morning. And Alison, of course, you originally covered this story for the, uh, for the Mail on Sunday. But Margaret, um, there has been a development. What has happened since you came on Morning Edition? Well, last uh, Thursday week, Alison phoned me and she said to me, we have a letter. And I said, a letter? A letter from where? And she said, a letter has been dropped to a person's house in Monaghan with your name only on it. Um, so I said, OK. So she said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm going to get in my car and go now. And she said, no, no, you're not. So anyway, as it turned out, Alison went and got the letter for me. And we got it from her on Friday and I read it. I got it Friday night home and we opened it and it's like having the golden ticket. Really? Yeah. It's your mother? It's my birth mother. Although she hasn't signed it, there's just no question. Uh, you know, there's stuff in there that she, I don't think anybody else would have said. Um, she's given, you know, a rundown of how it happened and where it happened and how she fell into these circumstances and it's just wonderful. God, it must have been so exhilarating to get that letter, wasn't well, it? Well, look, there's been lots of tears this week. Um, and, you know, the more you read it, the more you, you realise the sort of pressure and the trauma she's been under since. Um, she's never married and she's never had any other kids. And what was interesting, she wasn't a young girl either. No, which we you were. Her yeah, to have been. we did expect her to be a young girl, but she wasn't. She was. Uh, she was older than what we expected, um, but just found herself in a position where she was under pressure. She was under pressure from my father, my natural father, and she was also under pressure from the doctor. Um, and I just hold you there for one sec, Margaret. We're going to hear. You're going to read very generously. You're going to read to to us from the letter. But Alison, can you just put this in context? This was a, a GP in Carrick Macross who yes. was organising adoptions. Yes, Dr. Irene Creedon, a, a well-known GP in the area, um, from 31 O'Neill Street in Carrick Macross, had organised Margaret's adoption illegally. Now, anything, any adoptions that had happened after 1952 that didn't have a court order were illegal. So she was acting illegally. But uh, you know, a lot of people speak very highly of Dr. Creedon at the time, but this was 1972 when this happened. So it was a long time after the Adoption Act was implemented. And basically, you know, since both you and I have covered this story, um, Margaret's mother explains that she watched her on TV and, and you know, had read all the articles. Um, 19 people have come forward and uh, have said that they too were adopted illegally through um, Dr. Irene Creedon. So she was doing this, I mean obviously Dr. Creedon is dead now, we don't know her side of the story mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it would appear that she was doing this fairly routinely, yes. setting up adoptions in her surgery and I suppose there is a point of view that she was helping yes, unmarried is, yeah, women yeah. or yeah. women who didn't want to mind the babies themselves. Yeah. But uh, Margaret, I, I read that letter this morning, it, it is heartbreaking. Yeah, and I don't think it was a case that my mother didn't want me. Yeah. I think it's very clear from the letter that she did. Very clear, very but, clear. But was put under huge pressure um, because of her own circumstances at the time to give me up. Will you, um, there's a couple of passages there that you were going to read to us. First of all, she describes the period when she was pregnant with you. Okay. Um, I carried you under long dresses for nine months. You were still and still are very beautiful. I loved you when I carried you and I love you still. You know, so I think, you know, this is our time now. And she has lived this life and I have lived this life not knowing. And I think it's time now. There's so much tenderness in that letter towards you. I mean, she remembers so clearly the period during which you were born, the period during yeah. which she was pregnant. It's obviously been been huge for your mother, your birth well, mother. Well, I think, you know, and I have said this to other people over the last few days, if she had had other kids, it would have been a distraction for her. And, and that would have been nice for her. But, you know, where, and I've said it before too, I've had, you know, a nice life. And I have my own family now, my own kids, and, and they're my you know, most important now, but she's had nobody. And even though she would have known, certainly in the last couple of months, that I existed. That you were looking for her, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just been a really difficult time for her. 
She describes the, the, the time you were born as well. If you, if you can, Margaret, I mean, I don't want to, if it's not um, too much for you. She just, she, she, she says that, uh, that I was born in the doctor's house. Um, and she said that it was only herself and the doctor and my father was in another room. She said that the doctor delivered me, cleaned her up and sent her to a hotel overnight. And gave her 20 And quid. gave her 20 pound. That was what was so distressing you know, to send a woman away on her yeah, own. Yeah, and I think for me, having had kids of my own, you know, to be hooshed away, having done that, like, I mean, at least, you know, as a parent now, even though, you know, the few days after you have your child are very difficult, but you have this bundle. Yeah. But she had nothing. Just on her own and, and hiding it from everyone, you'd presume. Yes, yes, because she did hide it. She has said that she told nobody else. And there is also, there are details of your father um, yeah. that he has, he has died. He has now. passed, yeah. Um, now, he was quite an elderly man when he passed. He was a number of years older than she was. But I think she felt, you know, look at it, it was, sounded like as if it was love's young dream. Um, and, and she honestly thought that he would stay with her. He was a married man. He was a married man and he didn't. Um, and I think she even thought maybe he would take me in. Um, you know, she says that when she heard me describing my relationship with my own mom, my adopted mom, that, you know, she, it breaks her heart. And we'd hope that she's watching now. You do have a well, phone number you want to yes, send out to her. Yes, we do. Um, we have a, a special mobile set up. It, the phone call will come directly to me. There is no, you know, intermediary or anything so like this. So she can ring you now. Have we, would there, we have the numbers up on yeah. screen there. 87 35 Two, six. Yeah. Margaret, I, I really hope she does get in touch and we'll follow this story. And thank you so much for coming in this morning yeah. and for sharing that letter with us. Yeah, I think if we can just say that, you know, it, it is a difficult time for her. Um, she has nothing to fear by coming to me. I will drive anywhere she needs me to go um, to make this easier for her. And I think just, you know, please just be a little more, you know, come the extra step. You really want to see I her. just, yeah, I need this. Okay, well, look, thank you so much, Margaret. Okay. And thank you very much, Alison.